All those activities have to be organized somehow. And the way they're organized is called the software development process. Here's a picture of an old school waterfall development cycle. And it's called a waterfall because things flow down from the top left down to the bottom right. First, they're specifying the product, which is product requirements. Then they're specifying the software, software requirements, creating a software architecture, which results in a high-level design, designing individual pieces, individual modules, which gives you a detailed design, implementing, that's the part where you actually write the code, and then taking the source code and doing testing and validation, and finally deploying and maintaining. The waterfall process is effective for well-understood domains. If you've designed 57 thermostats before and you're making thermostat number 58 and you know what all the requirements are and you have a good idea what design is going to work, waterfall might work very well for that. It works best if you do not make a lot of big mistakes. So for example, if you make a big mistake in the product requirements and don't find out about it until you're testing and validating, you have to go all the way back up the waterfall and back down it again to make the change. So changes can be very expensive, and this is optimized for projects on mature technology that know pretty much what they're going to do and how they're going to do it, and they just need to get all the pieces done. There's a myth out there that waterfall means you can never go back, but in fact, the original waterfall paper had these backward arrows for bugs. So it's not that you're not able to make changes. It's simply that going back to make changes is pretty expensive.